that's what you are about, that you are innovators, uh, that you are here because you are trying to change the world, and that exactly the spirit that we have. Uh, today also we think together if it's uh, really necessary to focus on the price war or maybe we can focus more on the creation of value. Hello, this is Solar PV TV from Solar Power International 2017 uh, from Las Vegas. So we can hear the music around so we know that we are in Las Vegas. And actually for us guys, it's like a third day already, yes, after our disruptive uh, black tie gala. So we see Tom still wearing the black tie to today, yes. <laughs> and uh, we are together in our panel discussion, actually follow up of the discussion in InterSolar with Tony Siba. So we are discussing about, you know, stopping linear thinking towards exponential thinking. And uh, we are discussing that it would be a great idea of having exponential market scenario of solar future today. And actually today I would like to continue on that and take a decision, yeah? How do we proceed actually in having it done? But before we start, uh, you remember at the gala, there was a picture with different celebrities, yes? Uh, Barack Obama, like 300 million uh, search results on Google, yes? like Ronaldo, 300 million or 200 million. And I told you that there is one star celebrity which will be supporting our action. And this celebrity has 2 billion, 700 million research on Google. And I would like to announce this celebrity right now. So this celebrity is the Sun, Sun. So Sun has almost 3 billion research results on Google. So actually, if you have this celebrity, other celebrities will follow that. So this is like a beginning, uh, the big announcement actually, yeah. that I wanted today. And uh, I would like to start with Tony, because uh, Tony Siba, author of Clean Disruption, most importantly, the guy who explained me what is disruption. And since I met Tony, I understood that there is no stress, the disruption will happen. The only thing that we can do is to help this disruption happen quicker. Um, well, thanks, Tomas. And following up on Inner Solar, um, the idea of uh, disruption, the idea of all technologies that have been successful is that they all uh, get adopted as S-curves, exponential S-curves. And once they hit a tipping point, essentially they grow exponentially. Uh, no technology in the history of the universe, at least in the known universe, has been adopted in a linear fashion, and yet mainstream analysts consistently take um, adoption as a linear thing. Basically, they take last year's sales numbers and they increase them by whatever percent, uh, just pick a number from a hat, 11, 25, whatever, uh, over the next two decades, and that's the number that, uh, of penetration that they're gonna give you, whether it is for solar, batteries, electric vehicles, and so on, and consistently, they're wrong. And they're wrong because no technology gets adopted linearly. Um, either they die and they don't get adopted at all, or if they're successful, as in the case of batteries, solar, electric vehicles, and so on, uh, essentially, uh, once they hit a tipping point, they grow as exponential S-curves, and the market adopts them wholesale in a very short period, months or even a few years, uh, and then it's over. Uh, then the existing conventional forms of energy, transportation, uh, communication, and so on are obsolete, and the new form, the new um, format gets adopted. That's what happened with the smartphone, which is only 10 years old, and yet all of us has, have smartphones, or the cell phone, um, digital cameras, when they disrupted film cameras, it happened in a couple of years. It didn't just happen linearly. Um, and that's the mistake that, again, 
uh, mainstream analysts are making. And when I wrote Clean Disruption about three years ago, I forecast that by 2030, essentially all energy would be solar, um, and it would be all batteries in all homes and all businesses and uh, at the grid level, at the, every level, um, and all vehicles would be electric and self-driving and, um, and basically on demand. And of course, at the time, a lot of mainstream analysts either chose to ignore or attack because it was, as they said, um, too aggressive. And in fact, all my predictions have come true. Um, essentially, I said that by 2017-18, we would have several cars, unsubsidized EVs with 200 plus mile range in the 35 to $40,000 um, range. And it's come true. And by 2018, we're gonna have more than a handful. I predicted more than uh, nine years ago that solar would be at three and a half cents per kilowatt hour uh, by 2020. And in fact, it already is there in the desert, unsubsidized. And this is because of the technology cost curve. Because solar has been coming down at about 11.5% per year since 1970. Um, and there's no reason why it's not going to continue to go there. Batteries, same thing, lithium ion has been coming down at 14, 16% per year for 20 plus years. And there's no reason to believe that it's not going to continue going down that way. And if you do the cost curve uh, of batteries, of solar, of electric vehicles, then you can essentially calculate when the tipping point is going to be, where the exponential X, X, S curve is going to kick in, and basically it's gonna be over pretty soon. It's gonna be over in 10 years, and the old model of conventional energy generation is gonna be over, and it's gonna be all solar batteries and electric vehicles and autonomous and so on. And you can clearly see that tipping point coming at about 2020. Um, and so far, I've been right on the money um, because I'm taking into account the exponential basis of technology adoption. And the mainstream analysts have had to correct their estimates every year. And every year they correct it by 40%, by 50%, which is how the market is growing. And yet, instead of saying, you know what, it's solar has been growing at 40% per year since the year 2000. Why not calculate that it's going to keep growing at 40%? No, they slow it down, right? And they say, no, it's gonna grow at 11%. Now, now that solar is the cheapest form of energy in the desert, and now that solar on the rooftop uh, is, yeah, not new business models and so on, is the cheapest, you know, it, it, it's getting to be even cheaper than the cost of transmission. Um, why would it slow down when it's the cheapest form of energy? This is the point at which it's going to accelerate exponentially. Same thing with batteries uh, and same thing with electric vehicles. Um, so, in fact, we are seeing in um, energy and transportation technologies, PV, batteries and uh, electric vehicles, self-driving, um, that what we're seeing in every other technology industry, which is an exponential S-curve. It's gonna be no different, and by my estimates, the S-curve is gonna kick in very soon, 2019, 2020, and then it's gonna be over pretty much by 2030. And by 2030, it's gonna be all electric vehicles, all batteries, and pretty much all solar with some wind. So it means that uh, Tom will have a lot of business, yeah? <laughs> Not only in solar, but also in electric cars, yeah? And the storage. But um, I liked very much the point that uh, Tom arrived, which was that analysts, they are afraid to be aggressive, yes? And this is the same with the industry. So even uh, I'm friends with a lot of C-level people, they are afraid to be aggressive. And I would like to ask you guys, why you are afraid to be aggressive and uh, do you think, do you agree with Tony that uh, we should have our own scenario which can become in the future like a benchmark? And at the end of the day, we'll not have to every time, you know, to upgrade our market scenario, but the, our market scenario will be the true one. And maybe 
in this case, we can show the true pictures to politicians, to investors, etc. This would be the goal. Do you agree? Let's start maybe with Tom, yeah? because Tom, uh, BYD is a disruptive company, not only in solar, also in storage, electrical vehicles, now in Monterey. So let's give a floor to Tom. BYD is the, one of the uh, major uh, driver for the total renewable energy solution, right? We are also uh, looking into the uh, not only a single uh, market like solar, uh, we're also looking to the efficiency of the energy, uh, how to maximize the usage of the renewable energy from wind, from uh, solar, right, to more applications. And also, we are also the, one of the major uh, electric vehicle uh, producer in the world. So we are do, uh, considering, you know, the electric vehicle is part of the renewable energy storage system. In the future, if the large volume of the electric vehicle running on the street. So this is a give us a kind of the, uh, you know, uh, spiral that, okay, uh, innovation is the key to make the uh, renewable energy business, okay, sustainable growth. So innovation on the technology, uh, innovation on the business model. And we can strongly fulfill that, okay, uh, the good technology or a new technology, right, which is able to provide longer lifetime, higher efficiency, right, definitely can uh, create a new business model. This is uh, really, really uh, correlated. And this one of the uh, exciting, okay, uh, business model, right, this is, uh, really, you know, bring a lot of the exciting thing for the uh, money man, okay, who want to, you know, uh, invest, right? Because uh, the technology give them a very long, reliable performance of the system or products, and also they can get a higher uh, return. For example, like uh, people are struggling with the uh, lower, uh, lower IRR, right? Uh, for the solar, solar now becoming very cheap. Uh, but cheaper solar energy doesn't mean people, every people like to use it, because uh, the efficiency is not perfect enough to, to supply the 24 hours power to, to, to the user, right? But people normally really need the power at night. How do they able to uh, enjoy the lower electric power at night time as well, or 24 hours a day, right? It's not only a single person requirement, it's also some country struggling on that, like uh, countries in uh, Africa, countries in some, uh, you know, emerging market, right? So they are actually having a big solar farm plant, right? Gigawatt, few gigawatt, right? The key thing is uh, they really need the power at night. How, how can we really help them to enjoy such a low cost renewable energy, right? To benefit their, okay, entire society, right? To help them to, okay, growth, okay, uh, on the GDP, on the industry, commercial development, right? So technology will make things happen. Uh, if the technology proves that the business model, right, is able to bring the benefit, okay, to the investor, then, okay, that is a really, okay, how to attractive, right, for a lot of the investors are coming. So this is what we call innovation. On technology, will bring the innovation of business model. And this is an innovative business model. We will, okay, uh, get consistent investment to the industry. This is what I view from that, okay. Um, actually, I agree 50% uh, with Tom, uh, because uh, innovation is just improving, yes? And disruption is to invent new stuff in order to disrupt the existing stuff. You both guys are now disrupting your companies, yes, in some way, in order to lead the disruption of the world, yes? So from the, let's say, standard thinking within your group, even, you are now restructuring disruptive business model, the structure, yes? So I would like to start uh, with Michael, yeah? Because I know that you are so busy now, yes? because you have too much thinking yeah, on the disruptive things. And can you tell me, Michael, now, LTI, how do you adapt the new vision and how you introduce into life? Hey, Tomasz, um, disruption uh, means definitely disruptive business models. Yeah? But I'm also with uh, Tom, it comes from a technology base which you are constantly innovating. Yeah? So what I think in solar is... Yeah, maybe I pick it up, yeah. So in solar, I think it's um, special. We still can do something about the components, but it's also not always rocket science. But uh, with the situation and the mega trends coming together, and I'm talking about decarbonization, this is clear, but uh, decentralization, and that's what Tom is saying. Yeah? So you're not investing into grids anymore, but you completely disrupt the way the energy 
generation, transmission, distribution is taking place. Yeah? This is disrupted. So now this one is having an effect uh, on all of us and in a positive way. Third one, uh, which I want to comment, is digitization. Digitization for us at an inverter company is great because, I mean, all data are available, so let's make use of it. And other people are using it for different business models. So and we are seeing there, let's take Africa as an example, unspecified at this point, yeah? but they would generate uh, energy in a different way. They would not start build big power sites and transmission lines and everything. They would privatize some little uh, discourse, local distribution companies. They would move into IPP models on those. They combine it with smart meters. They will use uh, storage, uh, solar, inverters, whatever you want to call it. Yeah? And this is totally disruptive from a big utility who's raising money, building uh, big, big, big projects. Yeah? So for our company, it means a different way of thinking. Yeah? I mean, as a power electronics company, you can adjust uh, with your architecture to a lot of occasions. And for us, it's just beautiful. But it means we have to understand what is driving this market and what is driving the force. And I'm also with you that not all the classic research is done like this. You would always look at a uh, number of modules you would sell and you would extrapolate it at some time, yeah? But you are forgetting about uh, this impact of these three things coming together and even more, of course, with electric vehicles, yeah? As a German, I, I uh, have, of course, uh, some exposure to automotive, yeah? But uh, let's call a diesel gate made it so much quicker of what we are seeing in electric vehicles. What I'm with Tony, it would have happened anyway, but it's happening much quicker. So we are, as a technology company, of course, are much more forced also thinking about not only solar generation, but also, of course, transport. And as a wider picture, how to use all the energy we are using for transport and not just electricity and electricity uh, distribution. So it happens uh, in society, it happens in technology, it happens at the end of the day also in my company. And I think on this one, you have to have a clear vision and have to convince the people inside and outside at the same time. And then it's the same thing. It's coming out that it's extrapolating and it's enforcing itself. Also, I would like to ask uh, Michele. So, uh, Michele, recently you were building the largest project in Latin America, like EPC 350 megawatt, yes? But uh, I know that um, you are introducing new business models, new product lines, disruptive thinking within the group, yes? Do you also feel that you know this real disruption will happen? And uh, do you think that we need you know, to have our own disruptive uh, market scenario? So I would say that so far the uh, solar industry has been really highly disrupted. No? If you think that not uh, 20 years ago, but seven years ago, in Europe uh, we had in most every country feeding tariff program and now we are talking about the cheapest way to produce energy is incredible, in seven years. A few years ago, we were talking about uh, some feeding tariff program in a single country, maybe in two countries, maybe in three countries. Now we are talking about solar without uh, incentives all around the globe, Asia, Europe, and America. No? So, so far we have been uh, one of the most uh, disruptive uh, industry in the world. I do believe that on solar, next frontier is going to be smaller system, so distribution, uh, gener generated distribution, so producing where the consumption are. Mm -hmm. So we will have uh, some, uh, let's say, gigantic uh, solar farm in big country like China, India, US, while in other part we should go on, uh, or we will go in uh, more uh, delocalized production, moving from a paradigm for big power plant to small, uh, well-located uh, power plant. Then we've got the batteries. The batteries, the storage, is going to probably, referring especially to Africa, could be uh, in another changing paradigm, moving from the idea to have uh, tension line, I mean, producing plus line, to have self-independent uh, production. Of course, I do believe that it's still not um, a really question of price because if you compare the price with uh, an high voltage power plant uh, we are talking not about price still probably the technology need to to be relied on after to power up a town and on uh, small and not only small application but this uh, is going to be for us uh, 
this uh, fast moving industry has meant to move from a 100% Italian company to a company present in several countries. And now we recently uh, did um, a joint venture with uh, on batteries. We founded a company that is called Plug the Sun. Uh, we won recently a tender in Argentina for solar home system that uh, should be also in our view uh, a good uh, business path for the future. What I observe that more and more companies are going for the solution, yes? And at the end of the day, everybody is becoming in some way competitor. But also what I believe, that the market will be so growing quickly that we will not be able even to supply the market. And what I also believe, that we will need to have cooperation between the companies. Yes. Partnerships that today we cannot imagine. Do you, Tony, think it will be the case? Yeah, I mean, this is um, a multi-trillion dollar opportunity that's going to happen essentially within 10, 13 years. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's going to be a need for a lot of companies that are going to fit different pieces of the equation, and there's going to be need for standards, uh, interconnectivity, um, uh, forms of payments, and new business models, and so on, that are going to link all the companies uh, that are going to provide solutions, because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about, into different markets, whether it's Kenya uh, or Shanghai uh, or Los Angeles or San Francisco, each one is going to need a slightly different uh, business model or approach or um, level of quality and so on and so forth. Uh, and yeah, it's going to take a lot of companies to make that happen. The same way that it took a lot of companies to make the internet happen. So, you know, I, wanna, I was an early employee at Cisco, a uh, very early employee. And when we said that you know, the internet was going to disrupt telecommunication. Uh, folks looked at us like, uh, you're insane, right? Um, we were a small little company in Silicon Valley. And guess what? The internet, mobile telephony, disrupted all of um, uh, telecommunication. And now, the largest companies on earth by market valuation are the mobile slash internet companies like Apple and Google and Amazon and Baidu and so on, uh, that built solutions, built software, built new business models on that new infrastructure uh, that became the internet. So uh, what I think is that there's going to be an opportunity to build this multi-trillion dollar infrastructure that's going to be based on solar PV, on batteries, uh, on electric vehicles. Uh, and there's going to be another multi-trillion dollar set of opportunities to create new business models, new forms of payment, new software above the infrastructure level, just like what happened with the internet and uh, mobile telephony. So there are a lot of opportunities for a lot of companies. Um, and one of the keys to the success of the internet itself, of TCPIP, was open standards. Uh, TCPIP is an open standard and the World Wide Web was an open standard so that a lot of companies around the world were able to create uh, big companies and big revenues and big solutions, uh, big market uh, capitalization based on open solutions, not uh, open standards, not on closed standards. And a lot of the things that I hear uh, here too, you're all right in a in, in, in this sense, disruptions um, happen when there is a convergence of technologies. So remember that smartphones came out in 2007. Both the Apple iPhone and the Google Android. Um, why 2007? That's only 10 years ago, right? Uh, and not 2005 or 2009. That's because 2007 was the year when there was a convergence of many technologies like batteries, like touchscreen, and so on, that made a smartphone possible. And then it tipped, right, as an S-curve. Uh, and now, of course, most of us own smartphones. And um, what technology, uh, this convergence of technologies enable is new product innovation a new business model innovation, right? Um, but 
they're all enabled by this technology convergence. And they're, they all happen at the same time and they all feed into one another and they all help that exponential S-curve. Actually, I think that in all that discussion, we forgot about the, another, the most important facilitator, which is the society, the awareness of the society. And that's why uh, we are speaking about this celebrity which will support us with uh, 10 times more research uh, than, you know, than Barack Obama, yeah? which is the sun. So we have the sun, the symbol. We just need to find a way to explain that to the uh, society. But okay, like uh, we started our discussion about having this market scenario because maybe it's important to really let people, not only like society, but financial guys, business guys, politicians, to know what will be the reality. And Tony, how would you suggest that we come up with this scenario? And what help would you expect from the industry leaders? And how we can get the final, the job done? Essentially, they're getting it. They're starting to get it. I mean, there's there's a process in technology adoption life cycles. About them, the scenario. Yeah, so essentially first there's the denial, right? No, it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen this quickly and so on. And then the reality hits that yes, this is happening. This is an exponential S-curve. And then that's when you see the big companies announcing the huge investments, right? And, and, and they can't stop denying it, that this is gonna happen, that this is gonna happen quickly. Um, and once that starts happening, then it feeds on itself, right? Then you have to show those examples that A, you know, this is happening as predicted as an S-curve, and B, the technology companies that were denying it uh, are starting to accept it. And when they accept it, then the mainstream analysts feel comfortable in saying, oh yeah, it is growing at 40% and it will continue growing at 40%, not at what I said last year, 15%. Uh, so it feeds on itself, right? Once you hit that tipping point, then it feeds on itself. Um, so you need to educate basically the market as to, yeah, we're getting to that tipping point and we better get ready because the countries that win, the companies that win, essentially that are there when the tipping point happens are the companies and the countries but that are... Yes, of course. I mean, you know, in technology, it's a winner's take all market, usually. Uh, you know, if you're not there when the, 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 the S-curve tips, then you're out, essentially. So you have to anticipate when that tipping point is gonna be and invest anticipating that exponential uh, growth and uh, be there with the product and be able to scale when that exponential S-curve happens. If not, then you're out. You're gonna be too late. So can I ask you now our guest? You are here because you are disruptive, yeah? <laughs> because if not, you were not uh, joining Solar Future today, yes? Uh, but I would like to also to give the message to our viewers who are not yet so disruptive, yes? Will you support this market scenario? What would be your feedback? And how would you encourage also other guys to believe it that it's gonna happen? Michael. I mean, uh, first thing, I'm not believing in the forecast, which I'm getting there anyway, and we stopped uh, using them, yeah? So we are doing our planning uh, differently, and it's, it's for the reason you were describing. Yeah? What proved out to be uh, wrong 10, 15 uh, years, I'm not paying money and uh, proving it out the next time and saying this time it was slightly better. So you have to have your own opinion, and uh, I think this is a more important message. Everybody's seeing uh, the world with different eyes, and it's in our perception what we are doing out of it. Uh, but I think uh, this one is uh, very clear and it's also not too much about communication about it anymore. It can be always more and that's why we're doing it, uh, reaching the broad of uh, the societies, not only those guys who are taking investment decisions. But let's take uh, the investment decisions for a while. If you're looking what big funds are doing and how they are using uh, their capital in the last six months versus like two years back, you see uh, big changes. and. If you're not getting things closed like a fossil power plant anymore, if you are getting a not capital raised, if you have exposure, if you have investments yourself in the wrong assets, this is already, I think, in the financial markets a no-brainer at a while. Right? So, and this also means that automatically it will happen. Of course, uh, the pipeline uh, will be at one point of time tiered off, and there's no money available for classical assets. And on the other hand, this money is available for renewables. Yeah? 
So I think it's uh, more the awareness of uh, the publicity of the society and also reasons uh, why this uh, awareness is like this. Yeah, and I'm not putting it in detail, but uh, I think it's clear that there is a big interest in keeping distance and keeping things like they are. But uh, disruption you cannot stop. Uh, to align with you on this one, yeah? So it's happening anyway. So and I think it's uh, make it easier for all of us to face truth and for us as technology company also, as you're saying, getting ready to take advantage out of it. So and that's my belief and I do not necessarily believe in the numbers of analysts on this one, but I'm believing if the mega trends are right and uh, so other things I'm seeing in life, which are not yet in the charts of analysts, but they are there and there's evidence already. I agree with both uh, of them. No, uh, I, I do believe that now uh, solar has been so disruptive to be unstoppable. No, like internet, like internet was. You can have uh, a slowdown one year, maybe. It depends from how is the balance worldwide, but but but, but the trend is quite clear. It is unstoppable. Nowadays, all the business community is friendly with the technology, financial community as well. Again. Ten years ago, seven years ago, it was possible to finance only project with a filling tariff, so with on government risk basis. Now you are financing traditional PPAs, like every other source of power production, like is right that has uh, that has to be. Uh, production uh, and and products are slowing uh, down in price every year, and every year. Uh, adding a notch in higher performance so even here the the path is quite clear probably what we should still missing in some cases or in some areas like maybe some parts of south america and africa is the government and politics side i mean because the framework for anyone for us as an industry operator for the financial community and for the business for the investors has to be clear rule it's not you need to put this rule, just put rules, keep it, mm -hmm. and then the business will come. The key things that we always need to pay attention is the application. Because uh, energy is uh, such a, a big market that everybody needs it, right? But if you talk about staring on the uh, renewable energy as a capital project, right? Then it, it may be too narrow, okay? I talk about the uh, uh, look around the world, right? So many uh, country, right? They are struggling with the power, and the, the electric, energy price is very high. And uh, even in a uh, very well developed country like U.S., U.K., right? They also have a very high price in peak hour. So th this is unbalancing. Okay, it's asking the solution, right? Now how our renewable energy market, right, uh, or industry player can contribute? to try to okay, take this opportunity, help the, you know, the application level, right, uh, constraint to be solved, then this is the market opportunity. If we can really always steering on this one, we will okay, uh, think very hard to try to find out the solution, right? Uh, we really okay, want to sell okay, our energy on hand, right, to a PPA price which is, which is getting cheaper and cheaper, or are we willing to sell the energy to the moment when people need it, right? The only time that people need your service, they like to pay high. And because you solve their problem, right? And staring on this kind of the uh, constraint in application level, if we all merge together about technology, business model, financing, model, everything together, right? And also merge all the uh, player in the market working together to try to come out only a single okay, uh, perspective of the business, but also a combined solution. So that's why I talk about solar, talk about storage, talk about e-vehicle. This is something that is not far from us. It's just coming, just coming. And because from both government and also the uh, industry, right, and also even the end user, right, they all aware about this series of the uh, you know green energy okay, uh, requirement in the future. Because everybody wants the green life, right? So. If there's a strong intention on this one, okay, let's just focus on the bottleneck and the resources in the society will come with you if you have the best solution. Okay. So maybe I will uh, ask Tony for the conclusion. 
and your advice also, let's say, in the action plan, how we'll produce this market scenario? Yeah, I mean, I think in conclusion, um, you know, we're on the cusp of the biggest disruption of energy and transportation in history, bar none. Um, and solar, batteries, electric vehicles, self-driving, uh, on-demand, um, and uh, we're on the cusp. And uh, it's gonna happen for purely economic reasons. Uh, it's been so far uh, positioned as a green thing, uh, as in environmental green, not as a green dollar thing. But in fact, it's gonna happen and it's pretty inevitable if you look at the technology cost curves and business and product innovation because of this green motive, right? And it's gonna transform our society um, in a way that many don't anticipate. And we're on the cusp of that big tipping point where it's going to grow exponentially and the point of no return. And within 10 years, it's gonna be pretty much all over. Um, so I think that it's incumbent upon us, upon thought leaders and upon uh, business leaders and policymakers and so on, to A, understand the disruption that's coming um, so that we can anticipate both the positives and the negatives um, and so that we can take the bottlenecks out and so that we can have the right regulations and, that, and so that we can also have a safety net for the losing uh, segments of industry and society because there are gonna be losers and we want them to be taken care of so that we can take them to the winning side also. Um, but we should all understand that this is the biggest disruption of energy and transportation in history and we should all um, be ready for it, uh, have the right policies uh, so that everyone on earth, every person can benefit from it. But first we need to have our solar future today market scenario that we will communicate to them. Do you agree guys? So I think it was one of the most disruptive panel discussions because we are disrupted during the whole discussion. Yeah. And I would like to thank you so much yeah, because yeah. you gave a great uh, input. Even we were disrupted, but it also means that it proves that we are double strongly disruptive guys. So thumbs up for solar. Thank you. Thank you. And three, really, Tony, I would like to thank you. Thanks to Tony that he would like to work with us and help us to make it happen. Thank you so much. That was Solar PV TV from the most disrupted, disruptive panel discussion here in Las Vegas at Solar Power International 2017. Thanks for watching.